Hi, so uh, as I mentioned before, whoa, check it out. Why is it going forward? Go back. Is it like playing automatically? Okay, we'll figure it out. Cool. So uh, my name is Brad Chapman, um, and I'm, I'm here. I work at the Bon Franks Court, Harvard School of Public Health. Um, and if you need to find me online, I'm Chapman B in most places, so Twitter and GitHub and all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to talk today, real quick, uh, five minute talk about um, work I'm doing to build uh, pipelines for quantitative, quantifiable and scalable detection of genomic variants. And so this nice cartoon sort of diagrams uh, the overview of what this, pro what this uh, toolkit, which I call BC Bio Next Gen, provides. So you start with sequencing data, so um, next generation high throughput sequencing data. The most common thing we deal with is Illumina resequencing of human genomes and a configuration file, which is uh, I'll talk more about later, but defines what you want to do, and you feed that into the pipeline, and what it does for you is provide best practice uh, pipelines for doing analysis, um, integrating a ton of different tools together that are complicated to work together, and then it also provides uh, scaling and resiliency to errors and restarts and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so it's a uh, build sort of a higher level than people might put together with a bash script or make files um, and tries to parallelize that. And so what you get out the end is variations. Uh, um, Aaron talked a lot about that already, so I won't go too much into detail, but it's basically just differences in the genome. Uh, and then the thing that we add on top of that is assessment for quality. So how well did your alignment work? Uh, how good are your reads? How good is your variant calling? Um, how well did you cover regions you're interested in? Um, that all the stuff that you need to assess to make sure you can make a statement about the biology of a sample. And then once you're sort of satisfied with the quality, it provides hooks into analysis tools, so annotation and query and visualization. So um, hooks right into, it produces Gemini databases, uh, work with Aaron on that, so you can do analysis straight away. It uh, hooks into some visualization tools that you can visualize as well. And so I'd just like to talk today quick for development tools, uh, I mean development goals that I have for this project. Uh, the one is that it's quantifiable. You can assess variant quality. Um, second is that it's scalable. We're doing projects with 1,500 whole genome samples, so uh, scales to real huge things. Um, and reproducible, so uh, your input file, you know what you did. Um, it creates provenance of all the command lines that are run, so you know everything that happened, and versions, all the different uh, software that you're using. And it's uh, community-developed uh, software, so open source, documented, and widely deployable. And so to demonstrate sort of the, I, what I'm talking about with uh, quality, this is a plot looking at three different uh, variant calling approaches and looking at what variants are concordant, disconcordant. Um, the details aren't really important. What is important is that this lets you assess um, how well you're doing with each of the callers uh, you know, and break this down by different regions that you're having problems in. So this says like there's problems with some of these callers in discordant uh, callers in low coverage regions. And it splits it by SNPs and indels, so you can look at different classes of variants and discover um, which one's doing best. And so we we're lucky enough to be working with the National Institute of Standards Technology and their Genome in a Bottle project on the reference genome, which sort of provides the underlying uh, infrastructure that we can use to do these sort of comparisons. Um, and as I mentioned, it scales. Uh, we use IPython under the covers to do all of the scaling. And um, what we handle on top of that is building sort of heterogeneous clusters, lots of these things paralyze in different ways. Some of them paralyze with multi-core, some of them paralyze over an actual cluster, some of them don't paralyze at all. So uh, um, spinning up the appropriate type of cluster for different steps in the process. Um, and the input to this to define what you want to do is a simple YAML configuration file. Um, so it's nice, it's text-based, you stick it in a GitHub repository of complete uh, con like history of everything you've changed, you're doing analyses. Um, and it's meant to be sort of a high level domain specific language for defining what you want to do. So uh, you're telling it it's an Illumina uh, exome sequence with high coverage and you want to call it with three different variant callers. And it takes this and translates into the actual uh, best practice pipelines that are done under the cover. And so the reason that I'm here talking about this is that uh, the goal is to be a community developed uh, project. Uh, um, we. I do a ton of work trying to make it fully automated so you can install it um, from scratch on tons of different systems and it runs on lots of different clusters, so all the different stuff that you'll see at different uh, academic institutions because no one can use the same scheduler apparently. And uh, 
I mean, I, I'm really sort of happy that this has been deployed in lots of different places where I didn't have to touch it and someone else did it and it somehow worked there. So, uh, you know, that's sort of the, the main goal is the more you can get it out there, the more you can build those sort of things. And it integrates with sort of front end web platforms uh, like Galaxy and Stormseek. So you can uh, use it if you're, if you're enough to make it usable by non-biologists. And so, because community, it's all open source, uh, documented and available. So if you can check it out on GitHub there. Um, and so I thought at this point, as of real quick, uh, we'd have questions for 10, 15 minutes for all the speakers. If, if uh, Ryan and Aaron uh, and uh, Brent want to come back up, I don't know where Brent went to. And then people can just sort of ask questions. Um, what I'd like to have is sort of a discussion around the different things that people have presented. Um, so you can talk about general concepts or ask specific questions. I'm open to anything. So uh, cool, you guys want to come up and go. So, I mean, you could probably cut off the audio. I mean, yeah, I think it's fine. I don't know if we're going to repeat all the questions. So we could probably just yell, right? Like, <laughs> is it cool? Cool. Do you, one question. 